Hey pop, pop music from South Korea, has garnered an incredible following across the world, as its machine keeps creating new boy and girl bands and music videos that become instant YouTube hits. The Korean wave has hit not only Asia, but also Latin America, Northeast India, the Middle East, and North Africa. However, while K-pop appears to have become somewhat of an alternative to Western pop culture, it is not exempt from the occult elite symbolism and the agenda found in Western pop. In fact, the symbolism is often more blatant and in your face with K-pop videos, causing me to ask. Is K-pop truly an alternative to Western pop? Or just an effective way for the elite to get its message across in Asia? A quick look at K-pop videos such as Ajax's Insane and Ladies Code Hate You is all it takes to realize that mind control symbolism is as heavily pushed in K-pop than it is in the West. In fact, both of these videos basically read like an MK101 manual, using all of the symbols associated with it and portraying the stars as slaves. K-pop has effectively become another outlet for the elite to promote its mind control culture, even alluding to its sadistic practices and stylish videos aimed at young and unaware people. Let's look at the videos and see how they fit right in with the MK agenda that is also pushed in the Western world. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Age Axe is one of these K-pop idol boy bands that were completely created by a record label and reality TV. Their video, Insane, contains all of the hallmarks of MK's symbolism. Furthermore, it clearly depicts the singers as mind-controlled slaves who are hypnotized in a mental institution and dissociate to a world full of MK symbolism. How much clearer can it get? The video takes place in a mental institution room, where the band members held there are constantly hypnotized by creepy doctors. Throughout the video, the members dissociate to an alternate world while physically staying in the room. Causing a slave to dissociate is the basic premise of monarch mind control, and the video clearly refers to this. Why expose children to this sick practice? Because it is part of the elite's agenda. The singer is in a room and hypnotized by a handler. Throughout the video, the clock displays random times, probably emphasize the fact that MK slaves lose all sense of time. Above the singer is a Baphomet head, we do not fully see it in this shot. This symbolic figure is an anchor point for the slaves' alternate worlds. The video completely conforms to the codes of MK culture. Here, the slave's dissociation is represented by going through the looking glass. As seen in previous videos, going through the looking glass is the classic symbol for dissociating from reality. It was taken from Alice in Wonderland, a story that is used as a tool to program slaves. When the slave goes through the mirror, he enters his internal world as programmed by his handler. In one scene, the inner psyche is represented by a room full of mirrors. Those behind the making of the video appear to have a good knowledge of monarch programming, because this is exactly how the internal world of monarch slaves is made to be. In programming monarch slaves, mirrors are used a great deal. Within the monarch slave's mind, countless mirror images are made. The slave sees thousands of mirrors everywhere in their mind. The concept of hall of mirrors to represent a slave's mind is often used in MK-themed media such as Katy Perry's Wide Awake. The slaves then go through another mirror to end up in another very symbolic scene. A room that solely consists of dualistic black and white patterns. The pattern of this room was not randomly chosen. Dualistic patterns are used to program or hypnotize MK slaves. This painting by monarch slave survivor Kim Noble clearly shows the importance of the pattern in MK programming. The similarities between the music video and this painting are too striking to ignore. 
The video clearly shows that the scenes of dissociation are happening in the slave's mind. After seeing this guy in the checkerboard room with wind blowing at him, we see him in the hospital room facing a fan, implying that he is physically in the institution, but that his mind has completely dissociated. This singer has dissociated to another room. There are pentagrams all over his clothes. Combined with the Baphomet head behind him, this scene refers to the black magic rituals that happen during the slave's programming. At one point, the Baphomet head's eyeballs creepily turn towards the viewers, emphasizing its importance and letting you know that it is watching you. What kind of institution room has a Baphomet head right above the patient's bed while he's being hypnotized? A mind control programming site, nowhere else. Close-ups of the video camera tell the viewers that these Ajax guys are not simply insane, they are being monitored and controlled by their handlers. This scene shows the slave holds the key to his psyche, but, as we can see here, it consists of two rear ends with no key, hinting to the fact that slaves do not own the key to their own mind. All of this leads to the ultimate goal of monarch programming. The fracturing of the core persona and the creation of new ones. The multiplication of the slave into new personas. Almost every single frame of insane is filled with imagery associated with and used in MK programming. While the song is about them being insane, we clearly see that there is a lot more going on there. The singers are actively being hypnotized, monitored and controlled to dissociate from reality. Combined with occult symbolism, the video gives a complete picture of what MK culture is all about. Reading the title of the song and the translation of the lyrics, most people would believe that Hate You is about a girl that hates her boyfriend but cannot leave him. However, the imagery of the video communicates something a lot more disturbing. There are absolutely no references to a love relationship in the video, but plenty of references to another kind of relationship. One between an MK slave and her handler. Not only is the video replete with the basic symbolism we've seen in previous videos, it symbolically portrays the sick relationship between programmed slaves and a sadistic handler. The girl is sitting in a room full of dolls, which represent the slave's alter personas. On the wall are tally marks used by prisoners to count days behind bars. We, therefore, understand that the girl is confined and held there against her will. For a split second, the image of a caterpillar appears on screen. Immediately after, the image of a butterfly appears on screen, the symbol of monarch programming. When we combine the dolls the tally marks and the butterfly, we obtain a clear reference to monarch programming. The name monarch is not necessarily defined within the context of royal nobility, but rather refers to the monarch butterfly. When a person is undergoing trauma induced by electroshock, a feeling of lightheadedness is evidenced, as if one is floating or fluttering like a butterfly. There is also a symbolic representation pertaining to the transformation or metamorphosis of this beautiful insect. From a caterpillar to a cocoon, dormancy, inactivity, to a butterfly, represent new creation, which will return to its point of origin. Such is the migratory pattern that makes this species unique. While the two frames are pure mind control imagery, the rest of the video makes everything clearer regarding its true meaning. Here the singer innocently, yet creepily, plays with a marionette. She then becomes the marionette, controlled by unseen hands, a classic way of depicting an MK slave. The other singers appear in similar scenes. First, they play the role of the handler, then the slave. The singer holds the doll in a forceful restrictive way. She is then held herself by unseen handlers. This singer gives the doll a cruel and unusual punishment. She burns one of its eyes using a magnifying glass. We then see her with an eye patch, implying that she got the same treatment, and that she is a slave herself. Also, this is a slick way of flashing the unavoidable one-eye sign. Speaking of the unavoidable one-eye sign, here it is again. In this scene, the two singers are sitting behind a plate full of dolls that were torn apart. This is a symbol used to represent powerless and fragmented MK slaves. Like in Ajax's video, there's a horned figure presiding over the scene. This singer is strategically placed in front of the horns, making them appear as if they were sticking out of her head. 
This indicates that she is playing an MK handler. Here, she is holding a doll's head while brushing its hair. For a split second, the image of a Baphomet-like skull flashes on her face, emphasizing the fact that these horns are not there for random reasons. She then holds the doll's hair, confirming that she was a handler basically torturing a slave represented by the doll. A slave literally bound to her handler. As a large number of screenshots taken from this video, suggests, Hate You is pretty much a non-stop compilation of Monarch programming imagery. The members of Ladies Code are made to play the role of handlers and slaves, symbolically recreating some of the horrendous torture actual slaves have to live through. The chorus, which repeats I hate you three times to end with but I love you, can be interpreted as MK who despise their sadistic handlers, but that are nevertheless programmed into feeling something resembling love towards them. Sick. Yes. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you can by now easily recognize the specific set of symbols that are used by the occult elite its promote MK culture. Those who are part of the monarch programming system have created a disturbing culture surrounding it, complete with aesthetics and symbols that are now omnipresent in mass media. All of this is packaged with catchy tunes and good-looking performers, which causes young people to subliminally associate this culture with positive feelings, even making it fashionable. As these videos prove, this is all becoming increasingly blatant, and interpreting these videos through the mind control lens is almost impossible. While the mind control culture appears to have originated in the United States, the exact same set of symbols and meanings are also present in the booming South Korean pop scene. The fact that this is happening proves two things. First, the set of symbols I describe in videos is not a result of coincidence. It is cohesive imagery that originates from monarch mind control. Second, it is obvious that at the top of all music industries, whether it be in America, Europe or Asia, the same occult elite are promoting the same agenda. Why does Baphomet have to be in all of these videos across the world? Because the horned head represents those in power, and those in power are not your locally elected politicians, but a global elite. Through these videos, you are being told what the elite believes in, and the sick practices it engages in. Are people rebelling against this? No, quite the contrary, they are dancing to it, and paying money to purchase it. I guess age acts aren't the only ones who are insane. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job all is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.